The B-14 booster has been officially set for the upcoming flight, and with testing underway, interesting insights await exploration. Plus, we'll discuss SpaceX's recently announced FRAM-2 mission and its implications for the future. Let's dive deeper in today's episode of NR Studio. Preparations for the upcoming flight have garnered a lot of attention, not only because SpaceX is determined to succeed after two back-to-back -back challenges, but also because of the excitement surrounding the significant early progress toward full reusability. The primary pre-mission investigation centered around the potential utilization of the B-14 booster for use on Flight 9, especially given the substantial progress of the B-16. That investigation has now been satisfactorily addressed. The B-14 is officially declared ready for liftoff. Visual evidence from the production facility corroborates the initial booster movement. The B-14 was lifted from its position within the mega bay and placed in the booster carrier bay before being moved to the launch site. A few hours later, the booster was delivered and strategically placed near the orbital launch pad. At 10 a.m., the boom lifted the B-14 and positioned it on the OLM, marking a significant milestone in preparation for the flight. The B-14 is scheduled to undergo a comprehensive static firing test series on April 3rd and 4, with projected test hours ranging from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time. Unlike previous boosters, the B-14 will likely undergo a series of static firing tests that incorporate various engine configurations and fuel levels to ensure reliability. Once testing is complete, the booster will return to the production site for further assessment and final installation before proceeding to the launch pad for integration and final launch preparations. At the same time, the S-35, the upper stage designated for this mission, is likely also undergoing engine installation in the mega bay. Once completed, it will be transported to the facility for static fire testing, where, like the B-14, it is anticipated to undergo a series of evaluations to confirm performance, identify potential issues, and validate recent improvements. Following testing, the S-35 will return to the production facility for a thorough inspection and installation before being moved to the launch site, where it will join the B-14 for full vehicle integration. Given the current progress, I expect static fire testing for both stages to be completed within the next two weeks. After some further delays for final preparations, the booster and spacecraft will be integrated on the launch pad, making the April launch achievable. My prediction remains strong for April 20th. What do you think? Utilizing the B-14 for Flight 9 is a significant step forward for SpaceX, bringing them closer to their goal of achieving full Starship reusability. Furthermore, new revelations regarding the booster have emerged during its recent progress, particularly regarding its propulsion system. Images taken during the B-14 lift to the OLM provide a more detailed perspective of its Raptor engines, revealing key features that could potentially shed light on the upcoming test campaign. One of the most intriguing aspects of the B-14 readiness for Flight 9 lies in its engine configuration. Closer analysis reveals that many of the outer ring engines have undergone replacement. Importantly, these engines exhibit different characteristics when compared to previous iterations. They have shed their signature green-gray hue, now displaying a deeper coating adorned with white emblems. This may simply represent new protective coating, as certain engines show signs of warping, implying that they are indeed the same engines that operated during the B-14 previous missions. Of particular interest is the status of Raptor Pi, specifically designated Raptor 31. This engine has successfully completed missions on both the B-12 and B-14, positioning it as a contender for a third remarkable flight. While it is uncertain whether these engines have been replaced, if they continue to operate, this would mark a significant milestone in SpaceX reusability efforts. Furthermore, the prospect of upgrading these engines is encouraging. Upgrades could include increased thrust, improved reliability, or superior cooling and protection systems. Given the satisfactory performance of the outer ring engines during the previous B-14 flight, coupled with the lack of gimbal capability, a thrust upgrade would seem a reasonable development. However, it is likely that additional upgrades were implemented as well, making this flight an important testbed for these innovations. Concurrently, the middle and inner ring engines showed minimal color change. However, certain units showed a clear transition toward brown, accompanied by distortion indicating extreme thermal exposure. This suggests that these engines were reused rather than discarded. 
SpaceX is clearly advancing and redefining the parameters of Starship reusability. However, the benefits of reusability come with challenges in maintaining reliability. It is important to note that during the Flight 7 thruster burn, one of the middle ring engines failed to ignite. If the engines remain unchanged, it is likely that SpaceX has instituted notable upgrades, including advancements to the ignition system. The upcoming static fire test will be a pivotal moment, allowing SpaceX to assess the functionality of the newly integrated and updated engines. Despite this progress, it has been revealed that this will mark B-14 final journey. Sources indicate that the booster will not be captured. Instead, it will be intentionally directed to an ocean landing, which may allow SpaceX to prioritize the ship's performance. While it is disappointing that B-14 will not achieve full recovery, this flight will still lay the groundwork for even more incredible reusability achievements to come. We are currently witnessing an incredible phase of progress in SpaceX's Starship initiative. If you are excited about the upcoming event, please show your support for the SpaceX team on this groundbreaking mission by commenting, let's go B-14 below. Now let's discuss one of the most talked about Dragon missions of the moment, FRAM-2. Since its announcement last year, FRAM-2 has sparked significant interest in the aerospace sector. Excitement has been building as SpaceX engages in significant preparations, including vehicle buildup, integration testing, and strategic discussions with astronauts. Finally, at 9.6 a.m. Eastern, on the 31st, the mission successfully launched from Launch Complex 39A. Just 10 minutes after liftoff, the Dragon spacecraft separated from the Falcon 9 second stage, marking the beginning of a significant three- to five-day mission that will carry four Fremenauts into orbit. Shortly after separation, SpaceX verified that the Dragon spacecraft's nose cone had successfully deployed as anticipated. During that time, the spacecraft and its crew navigated a 90-degree tilt, an atypical trajectory that laid the groundwork for the mission's revolutionary goals. After launch, SpaceX underscored the significance of the mission. FRAM-2, which marked the first human spaceflight dedicated to the exploration of Earth's polar regions, lifted off from Launch Pad 39A in Florida, just 17 days after NASA Crew-10 successfully deployed to the International Space Station aboard a Falcon 9. Musk said it marked the first instance of humans orbiting Earth's poles. Remarkably, in just its first day, the mission began providing significant scientific data. A notable highlight was the unveiling of stunning imagery of Earth's polar regions taken by Dragon. The video showcases sweeping vistas of pristine ice and snow, providing a fresh and unique perspective on this isolated region. Until now, such imagery has been obtained exclusively through satellite technology. But for the first time in history, astronauts aboard a spacecraft were given the extraordinary opportunity to experience these stunning views firsthand. Along with the polar footage, SpaceX revealed new images showing the crew aboard the Dragon spacecraft as they begin their initial research efforts. As reported by SpaceX, the Framenauts immediately began targeted research efforts on their first day in orbit. Among the experiments conducted was an exploration into the adaptation of human cognition to spaceflight conditions a critical investigation for future spaceflight efforts. Additionally, SpaceX has verified that the crew conducted the first in-orbit assessment of Starlink connectivity during the mission. Starlink assessment is a key goal of FRAM-2. SpaceX characterizes the mission as its second attempt to explore laser-based communications technology using Starlink. The company previously showcased Starlink's capabilities during its Polaris Dawn mission, which flew to an altitude of 1,400 kilometers, 62 miles above Earth. At 440 kilometers, FRAM-2 presents another opportunity to demonstrate the system's capabilities. One of the images shared by SpaceX shows off a Starlink adapter that's been meticulously designed for in-orbit applications, differentiating it from conventional models used on Earth. With FRAM-2 already making its mark on history, the days ahead promise even more exciting discoveries. The mission continues to advance the boundaries of human space exploration. To facilitate direct observations, the Dragon spacecraft is equipped with a dome-shaped glass window, known as a cupola, strategically installed in the hatch. This marks the second time SpaceX has deployed the feature, which gives astronauts an incredible 360-degree perspective of the cosmos. At four feet wide, SpaceX proudly claims it's the largest uninterrupted window in the cosmos. This remarkable enhancement allows the crew to see Earth's polar regions in an unprecedented way, 
providing stunning visuals and critical data for research purposes. In addition to its stunning visuals, the FRAM-2 mission includes 22 scientific experiments, some of which have the potential to significantly impact the trajectory of future space exploration. A particularly interesting research effort centers on the cultivation of mushrooms in space. This experiment seeks to evaluate plant growth in microgravity, a critical advance in building a self-sustaining food system for extended missions. If successful, it could set a precedent for space farming, allowing astronauts to grow food for future colonies on the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Another key experiment involves conducting pioneering X-ray imaging of the human body in orbit. This mission aims to investigate the effects of microgravity on the human musculoskeletal system, providing critical data for maintaining astronaut health during extended missions. Prolonged immersion in the space environment can result in muscle and skeletal damage. Thus, this research aims to advance strategies to ensure the safety of future astronauts. Furthermore, the launch and landing protocols associated with this mission are unique. Given that FRAM-2 is intended to achieve a 90-degree inclination to orbit the polar region, the Falcon 9 launched southward, a highly unusual trajectory that facilitates a safe abort in the event of an unforeseen circumstance. The Dragon spacecraft has undergone software enhancements to facilitate a smooth water landing, if necessary. Simultaneously, in an effort to reduce space debris, the mission is strategically designed to return and land on the United States. That's it for today's episode. See you in the next episode, and thank you all for your support.